reminder, if everybody can make sure your phones are away and laptops are closed and stuff. Um, this is Mark Jacoby and Lisa Mushroll. Mushroll. Um, from Blue Baron's Farm, and we looked at their social media, because they're so cool, oh. and uh, <laughs> um, came up with some questions for them. But I gave them the questions in advance. So I don't know, do you want to just, do you want to copy? I, I would love a copy. Um, and yeah. you know, I kind of grouped them with, you know, kind of like, how long have you been doing this? What do you like about it? Um, some of the challenge, you know, here, here's two. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I did, I tried to clump them into topics. Yep. And then, but also, I'm sure people will have questions as we go, or they may want to ask a specific question that they came up with. Great. Um, yeah. And we have a solid half hour where some people might have to leave for class, then it's lunch for some of us and me, so it's not like a tragedy. Nobody will become barging in, but um, I do recognize some of you have to go. So, thank you. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, and take it away. Tell us about your farm. So, we've been farming for 35 years in Washington County. Uh, we have fields that go from around Cherry Field all the way up to the Canadian border. We have fields over a large area so we can extend our harvest as long as possible. Um, we're organically certified. Um, all of our blueberries are low bush blueberries. Are, uh, it's, a, it's a native heat plant. And we, what we do as organic growers are things that encourage native blueberries to grow. Um, so, for example, we spread sulfur to lower the pH because they're acid-loving plants, and that will eliminate grasses. We, we do a lot of uh, hand weeding. We have crews out all summer with uh, string trimmers, weed whackers, clippers, clippers uh, where we're weeding out uh, high acid plants, sweet fern, landfill, redora. So, yeah, that's what we do. We do have, we did get a, a, a piece of land that had high bush blueberries on it where you could just pick them off, but there are only like four plants, and those are really awful to taste. I don't know if you've ever had them before, but the, the low bush are so much sweeter than the high bush. They're very, the others are quite tart and uh, are what we have made. Are they the big ones? The big ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it's really a geometry yeah. issue. The, the smaller the berry, the greater percentage of peel, and most of the flavor is in the peel, and as are most of the beneficial phytochemicals, the anthocyanins, those are mostly in the peel. So if you have a smaller berry, you have a greater percentage of peel. Which is why Maine yeah. has those wonderful berries. Can we just answer these as we come to them, or, or and then you could interrupt us? Does questions. anybody want to jump in with a question so far? Yeah. Um, what would you say is like the most fun about like what you do? Like what's the most fun part? For me, it, it's uh, we have a lot of kids come help us and they live in our house with us. So we have, um, in addition to our kids that come back to help us, we have 12, around 12 kids who come. Sometimes as many as 18. Yeah, who come and live with us and help us harvest. And we do the whole harvesting, processing in the barn, and then delivering, a lot of our delivering is to here on the island and co-ops up and down the coast. And it's just a real fun time having everybody joining us for our meals, everything from, from when they wake up to when they go to bed at night. It's just really, uh, we do a lot of swimming, we take kids canoeing. Uh, it's, just, it's just a real fun community time. Yeah, it's, it's lots and lots of work, endless work. But it's also lots of fun. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, our favorite time is harvest time. Yeah. Uh, but there's nothing about it that isn't fun. We like all of it. Uh, we go out and we blueberry fields on the barrens, for example, and there could be a thousand acres around us of blueberry barrens, and we're the only people there all day in all that solitude, and 
that's just something we really like. And you get to be out all the time. Yeah. In the fall, in yeah. the spring, get a lot of ticks, <laughs> black flies. <laughs> so but it's just fun. Um, we do use, uh, this question is whether we use heavy machinery. We do have fields that we rake by hand. Some fields we rake with a walk behind powered raker. And some fields we rake with a big tractor raker. And how we rake depends on what we're doing with the berries and also what the field is like. If you're freezing berries, you can rake them in a way that bruises them some, it doesn't matter. If you're selling fresh berries, and we do both, then you have to be exceptionally careful that you don't bruise the berries when you rake them. If you bruise them, the berry will respond by sending sugar to the peel to try to heal it, and that will make the berries sticky, and people don't like that. So we rake very carefully for fresh berries, and some of that is mechanically raked also, but we have a different kind of raker for fresh berries that mimics hand raking. Oh, bears. Uh, bears a problem. Yes. <laughs> Last year we put out five different bumblebee hives, quads, in, quads yeah. in five separate places, and the bears took every single one of them yeah. off. But we have honeybees that we electric fence, although we had also electric fence that. Yeah. And that's pretty strong, so they don't usually get into that. And we rent those hives. The bumblebee, the the but the uh, honeybee hives, if the bears come to get that while they're in our care, then we have to then pay to have those replaced. But we also have a lot of foraging from moose, deer, um, turkeys. Sometimes we, like there was a field a couple of years ago, we just had to leave that field because they had eaten all the blossoms off. And so it just it's, it just depends year to year. Yeah, we, we have abandoned certain fields near towns because of uh, deer grazing. Uh, a lot of people like to feed deer, and if uh, there are too many deer, then we can't have a good blueberry crop. So the biggest issue for us on fields we have near the ocean is seagulls. Seagulls can strip a field in just a couple days. Oh. Of berries? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're Amazing. like drills, those oil drills. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, they can sell blueberries. That's yeah. Yes. Yeah, they can strip yeah. a field in no time. Yeah. So wow. for us as organic growers, there are people who shoot them and do all these other things. But what we do is we just try to hurry the harvest to beat. Uh, you have to share the harvest with the animals that live <laughs> in the area, mm -hmm. is the way we feel about it. And so we're happy to share. But what we try to do so that we're not sharing too much is to hurry the harvest so we get it before they do, essentially. Yeah? How long does it take to harvest a field? Well, for us, it depends on how you're harvesting and it depends on the field. But when we're on our game and everything's going the way we'd like it to, we can harvest about two acres a day. So we're harvesting, we're managing usually around 200 acres. Blueberries are a biennial crop, which means you harvest them every other year. And so we harvest half of our fields every year, about 100 acres a year. So uh, we have 45 to 50 days to get those berries in. So it's a mad rush. Sometimes we'll uh, put more people and equipment on, onto a field to hurry it up. But generally what we like to do is rake two acres a day and that's raking an amount that we can process. We have a, a fresh pack line. We're soon to have a color sorter. And so we have to, uh, it isn't in our interest to hurry the harvest faster than we can process the berries. If you're trying to raise a family on a small family blueberry farm, the way you do it is by packing the berries and retailing the crop. You don't sell it to a freezer factory. And, and you're very much limited in your efforts by how quickly you can process berries on a fresh pack line. That's the slow part. So we rake as fast as we can for our processing capacity. Plus the weather plays part in that. Yeah. If it rains, then we're held up raking because the berries have to be dry. Yeah. 
when we rake, otherwise they stick together and clump and they they don't run well on the lawn. Yeah. So, and then and then we have to also worry about drought. Yeah. When, when there's drought, they just shrivel up and then they fall through all the strings on the machinery that we have from the processing. So yeah. we're, it's pretty weather dependent also. It is, and if, you, if you're an organic grower, um, you can't really irrigate. Just about anything you would do on a blueberry field, weeds are more responsive to than blueberries. So if you're going to fertilize with supplemental nutrition, you'll grow lots of weeds. If you're going to irrigate, you'll grow lots of weeds. If you're a conventional grower, that's okay for you because you're spreading herbicides but that's not available to an organic grower. So for us, we uh, can't irrigate, we've experimented with it, we can't really irrigate, and we can't really supplement the nutrition. So for us, we have to be content with much smaller crops and are much more weather dependent. So we have, we have fields up on the barrens, the western barrens, eastern barrens, and when it's very dry, we just can't rake them. Berries just get too small, and we just have to give up those fields. Um, in answer to a question here about the relative yields of organic berries, we get maybe 25 to 30 percent of what a conventional field would get. If we, if we're really on our game and are doing everything just exactly right, it would be good for us to get 3,000 pounds an acre. Irrigated conventional land on the barrens, they're getting 12 to 15,000 pounds an acre. So there's a big a difference in yeah. being organic. Let's see. Distributing our product. That's through, uh, we, ha we do have a farm stand at our house. And we also uh, deliver a lot here and co-ops up and down the coast. Do you guys freeze your own? Yes. So I know you you process the fresh ones, but you also have the freezer? Yes, yeah. yeah. we, okay. we process all those as well. Yeah. yeah. That's great, because then you don't have to pay somebody else for that. Right. Well, and it's a or different... Yeah. yeah. It's a different... What a lot of small farms have started to do is to take their berries to a freezer factory like Merrill's, for example, in Ellsworth, and they bring their berries there, and then they draw them out after Merrill's has frozen them. But it's a different kind of freezing process. It's called IQF, Individually Quick Frozen. And um, uh, that's different from what we do. We, ours are dry frozen. Uh, we prefer it because with Individually Quick Frozen berries, uh, the berries are washed and they're abraded in order to remove stems. And that abrading removes some of the peel. And so the, flary, the flavor isn't as bright. Mm. And they also bleed more. Yeah, they're all, they get all over your fingers and things like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. it's a different kind of product. Yeah. Um, COVID. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> we were affected by COVID. <laughs> uh, all of our harbor shut down with restaurants. And we sell a lot, like to Jordan's and those places. And so we were, we had to go down toward Portland area to sell to other farms down there because people were then going to farms to buy their produce rather than grocery stores. That's also when we started our farm, our, far, our own farm stand at the house. And there we also sell pies, pies and slices of pies. But that was, that was the behind, that's why we started a farm stand at our house. Because COVID really cut back on where we could distribute fruit because most mm. things were closed at that point. And what about, um, workers, were you able to have your workers <coughs> as long as you were all can stayed as a pod? Yes, yeah. they had to get tested before they came Okay. and then they had to have a negative test. Yeah. If they hadn't got, gotten their test yet, then they slept in a tent outside until they were able to join and then whenever we would we would go out to deliver, they'd have to wear a mask yeah. and, and do all that and we just sort of kept to ourselves. So, so your production didn't necessarily go down? No. Nope. We saw a graph right. from University of Maine, maybe, and it showed in 2020 production just went boom like yeah. that, and I wondered if it was because people couldn't get workers. No, we're we're out by ourselves usually right. in all these library fields. Yeah, we usually have a waiting list every year for people who want to come work. 
Yeah. We don't have any trouble getting workers. We, we pay really well, and we make sure it's fun. And so and that's what working should be to us. So we don't have any trouble with that. Yeah, so it, it, was, it, was, it really wasn't a difference for us yeah. during COVID, I would say, during, with that aspect. It was just delivering there was yeah. where we had to sell them. So to how many team members throughout the season? So what happens for us is this. Um, the harvest goes for us from mid-July, maybe to mid-September, depending on the year. And we're packed full. We'll have as many of our kids as we can get to come home, 12 to 18 people come with us. But so maybe the total crew is 15, 20. It varies a lot. But for the rest of the year, uh, there's a lot of field work to do. If you're an organic grower, you really should burn your fields every other cycle. Um, fungal diseases and insects, uh, their populations grow over time in a field. And if you're a conventional grower, you have sprays to address that. But if you're an organic grower, what you need to do is burn your fields. That will eliminate the fungal spores and uh, also overwintering insect pests. So after the harvest, uh, Lisa and I are spreading straw with a mechanical straw spreader. Maybe we'll, we'll have tractor trailers of straw coming and we'll spread all that. And then we need to assemble a crew for burning the fields. That's always a challenge. Always a challenge. We get a lot of COA students doing, helping with that. Because yeah. like what to, time of year is that? Is that like now or right. March? Or? It, yes. it, it, some, it, uh, increasingly it's going to be in the fall because of changing weather patterns, but it's usually October, November, or March and April. Yeah. If anyone likes to burn blueberry fields, yeah. give us your name. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll put you on the you, list. We'll put you on the crew. <laughs> yeah. But so uh, after we've spread all the straw, we'll burn those fields. The fields that we don't burn, we mow, and then we have to spread sulfur. And then we're weeding. So for us, uh, blueberry farming is, except for December and January and February, the rest of the months is blueberry farming for us. And then delivery is year round. So it's not uh, to get the harvest in and kick back and enjoy your life. There's always work to do. Uh, and luckily, uh, we enjoy the work, so that's not a problem. So what is your normal crew for the off season work? Well, uh, so when I'm, I lead the burning operation, and whenever I'm burning, I've got six people I'm burning with. If we're spreading straw, it's... Sometimes we'll get help with that, but it's yeah. really a two-person... In a, in a perfect that. world, it's four people, but yeah. it's usually two people for us. Yeah. For, the, for the weeding crew during the summer, uh, that could be two to six people. It varies quite a bit depending on our financial resources and the quality of our fields. And, 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 you get and the, yeah, and some kids want to come early. They're ready to come early, and yeah. so that would be a good thing for them to do is come help with that. Yeah. And that's like a half day sort of thing. Yeah. So work half day, not the other half. Yeah. It's not a full day's. There's this. I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, woofing. There's this. Uh, uh, in farm state, there are these different mechanisms people have to go to go sort of hang out on a farm in exchange for maybe a couple of hours work and then you get a place to live. We don't really do that kind of thing. Uh, what we like to do is really bust our chops, work really hard, and make a lot of money. That's that's how we like to do it. But so, we are thinking about the wolf thing, especially in the spring. Yeah, we've been, because, yeah every year we're thinking. Yeah, <laughs> because, you know, it's nice to have, I mean, it's not a full day's work at all. Yeah. So then they can kick back on that. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, as you can see, we're... Yeah, we're back and forth. The kids are always like, "We really should do this." Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. We're always trying different things. Yeah. Th that's the main thing. You have to be adaptive. We've been doing this a long time, and uh, we everyone went to college in our family uh, from blueberry proceeds. But you have to keep thinking about how to do things differently and better. You have to always keep changing what you're doing, adding fields. Yeah. Getting rid of fields. But our kids are taking more of a a role of, like they handle all the interns coming in, they do all the interviewing for that. Um, I would say, yeah, so 
Um, you mentioned that um, you're you're noticing the changing climate and yeah. the variability and stuff. What kind of an impact is that having, Ugh. or how are you able to adapt to that? So, uh, so what's happening for us is uh, normally what you, one likes to do is prune by either burning or mowing after leaf drop. Okay. Because until leaf drop, the blueberries are sending energy back to their rhizomes. And especially if you're an organic grower who can't supplement nutrition, you want the plants to return as much of their energy to the rhizomes as possible. What's going on now is leaf drop is later and later and later, to the point where we can't really prune in the winter anymore mm. uh, in the way that we would like to. We didn't get a frost last year until well into almost November. Yeah. So and it used to be the end of August. Often we would get a full moon at the end of August or in September. Yeah. yeah. So that's really changing things for us. Also, the springs lately have become um, wetter and warmer. And for us, in just about a week, uh, it better be in about a week, <laughs> we'll have about 100 beehives out, rented hives. So we'll drop about 15,000 bucks a year renting beehives. And those are for honeybees, and those bees won't work if it's raining or if it's below 60 degrees. Uh, and so last year, for example, if you remember, during around this time of the year, there was lots of rain. So we had all these bees out that spent just about the whole pollination season in their hives. So it's an increasing issue for us to have weather that's good for pollination. People are hedging their bets on that now, increasingly by using bumblebees, which will fly in the rain and in the wind, when honeybees won't. And so that's a strategy we've been exploring. Yeah, plus the uh, honeybees, they, were, they weren't coming when the blossoms were ready because... Yeah, they were accustomed to a different pattern. Yeah. Too late. Yeah. yeah, so they're having to move their bees up from like Florida and Georgia earlier because the blueberries are blossoming sooner now. Yeah. And we start harvesting the middle of July. It didn't used to be. We, we didn't start harvesting until August 1st. Yeah. And now we're done sometimes at the end of August, whereas we used to go to the middle of September. Right, right. So, and I know either last year or the year before, um, there was a the apple trees yes. got nailed yes. because the yes. there was a frost yes. and all the blossoms yes. fell before they were pollinated. Yeah. yeah. So that was a bad yeah. Was that did you guys get hit with that too? Yeah, there was we a June did. third frost yes. that pretty much wiped out a couple of our fields. Yeah. 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 So things, the weather's just you can't it, it's not reliable anymore. Right. You never know when you're gonna have a drought. Last year was too much rain. Yeah, I, so. I'd say the variability of it is more an issue than some long-term change in dates of anything. It's just yeah. so much more. Variable. Although it is, everything is sooner. Like yeah. all the factories are done. They're like two weeks after, and then they're done. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't want to ask all the questions. If you guys have any questions, <laughs> please jump in. Um, but I am wondering, are you seeing any, because of that, you have different Pests? Like bugs? Yeah, like the spotted ginger software. A huge issue for us is uh, most of the invasive pests seem to come from Asia. And the most recent one is called the spotted ginger software that came into Oregon in 2011, made its way across the country, and now is in Maine. It's endemic in Maine. And that, if you're an organic grower, is almost pos impossible to control. There are sprays for a conventional grower, but they're not really effective. There's nothing really effective for an organic grower. And for us, it's the same thing. We just try to hurry the crops, just try yeah. to get it before the bugs do. So increasingly, we're adding acreage just as a hedge against things mm -hmm. like that, because uh, we can't, we are, we are no longer as confident as we once were of yields from our acreage because of changing patterns like that. So the way we hedge it is by having more acreage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of that pest again? Could you maybe write it on the board? Uh, <laughs> That's good. It's a, a sophila, right? Spotted, so a, spotted 
winged. This is how everyone I know writes it. That's <laughs> WD. Yes. So Drosophila is a fruit fly, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And it can just devastate. It can take your whole crop. Yeah. Uh, normally, the normal fruit, fruit fly lays one egg in a blueberry and there's one maggot. A spotted wing Drosophila may, may lay dozens of eggs. Their life cycle is like four or five days. Right. So they just overrun the field oh. in no time. And what they like is left fruit that's left in the field. Uh. Or, or if you're, you know, they, they also will get strawberries and raspberries. They like the mm -hmm. soft fruit. Yeah. Oh, hold oh. up. Okay. Yeah, we're not used to these fun chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Spotted yeah. ranger sofla, a horrible pest, we hate it. Yeah. yeah. So it's what we live with. You can trap them, uh, but you can't. So when, when you trap fruit flies, which we do, uh, you can trap them to see if you have them. Mm. And then you can trap them in what's called mass trapping. You can design a trapping system that traps them all out. But that doesn't seem to work with spotted ranger sofla. So we have not found anything to no. do other than just hurry just up. Just get it done. Hurry, hurry, hurry. That's our answer. And they come in from the woods, so you just have to hurry, <laughs> get the crop yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. And we've been, for all of this time, we've been hand processing our berries on a fresh pack line. Six or seven people gather around this moving belt and pick out berries that look bad. And for the first time this coming year, we're switching to computerized laser sorter in addition to people. And one of the reasons for that is things like spotted and drosophila. Uh, a device like that can spot those berries more readily than a human can. And so uh, we're trying to stay ahead of the issue. Um, what percent of the berries are spotted and fresh versus frozen? Uh, I think yeah, right now it's about two thirds fresh to a third frozen. Um, over time, we'd like to increase the frozen, uh, but so far, that's about what it is. So the, the fresh is the mad rush. A lot of farms won't do fresh at such. It could be a real bother, <laughs> but that's what we do. We like we like to do fresh. It's lots of fun. Um, Part of what we're struggling with this year, so if you're an organic grower and you have fields next to a conventional field, the regulatory framework in this country is that your conventional neighbor gets to spray whatever he wants, even if it drifts all over your field. But you're not allowed to market berries that have drift. So what we need to do is maintain a buffer. So a buffer is a part of our field that we manage organically, but are compelled to market the berries as conventional because of our neighbor's drift. So um, increasingly we're looking for what to do with those berries that is worth doing. If you take berries like that to a freezer factory, their value is so low, it's, you wonder why you bother. But there are, yet there are people who market conventional berries successfully. So we're wondering about that. The other issue for us is when we get a new field, and we're always getting new fields, there is a period of time, three years, from when the last synthetic chemical was sprayed until that field can be considered organic. So in the meantime, you have to market those berries as conventional berries. And so Increasingly, we find ourselves wanting to market conventional berries, even though we're organic growers, because we're not sure what else to do with them. But we, we do try to find fields that we, that have that that is only, they're only organic. We don't have to worry about any buffers at all. Yeah, that's, but the, that's but, ideal. Yeah, for us. but the yeah. transition berries. Yeah, having to wait. And that's hard because you get a lower yield, yeah. right? And yeah. the and Price the lower is probably yes. lower yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of uh, small farmers, they used to take that. They used to have the, the big factories come and do their fields, mm -hmm. but the factories don't need them anymore, and so they're getting rid of all those small farmers, 
and the small farmers don't have a way to harvest all that stuff. So if we get those sorts of, that's some of the stuff that we're getting, uh -huh. but we have to wait those three years yeah. right, right. to get those to get those berries certified. Yeah. So in the meantime, we're always looking for markets. If you look on in Bar Harbor, for example, Jordan's Restaurant does blueberry pancakes, and they buy a ton of blueberries from us. But they don't care if they're organic or not. That's just not of interest to them. If you go to a place like Side Street Cafe and have their blueberry pancakes, they really want them organic. It matters to them. So the key for us is to find places where um, it's a reputable customer, but they don't care if they're organic. So that's, a, that's something we work on all the time, marketing that in that way. Any goals for this year or the years to come? What are your goals? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> they have perfect fields. <laughs> Without any weeds. <laughs> we're, always, we're always striving to do our work better. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very satisfying it, to have. Uh, our work is lots of fun. It often doesn't pay as well as we would like it to. Lisa and I are often out slinging hammers in the winter or woofing or, or some darn thing. Uh, so uh, we're always trying to figure out how to uh, do our work in a way that pays us better in ways that we find enjoyable. Um, if you're going to be a family farmer, you're not looking at uh, a financially secure and lucrative future. That's, be a lawyer if you want that, or, or a dentist, or whatever else. Yeah. There are plenty of ways to do that, but family farming is not one of them. So you're always making trade-offs uh, because you enjoy your lifestyle. And we love our lifestyle, we love what we do, but uh, a goal we have for this year is to be smarter in how we do it so that we uh, earn uh, more of an income in a way that we like to do it. For example, if we were to hire a bunch of Guatemalans and pay them nothing, uh, we would have more money. Uh, but that doesn't sound fun to us. And so what we like to do is get a bunch of people in that are like us and like our kids. And, and we like to pay them really well and everyone to have lots of fun. And that's a strategy that makes for an enjoyable life, but not necessarily a well-paid one. So we're trying to figure out that balance, and that's what we'll be striving for this year, as we do most other years. And part of how we'll do it is by adding more acreage and, and processing more berries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have just a couple of minutes, yeah. and I wondered if you guys would let them know what you're planning on cooking with their delicious oh. blueberries. Yeah. Um, I know that in our class we're doing a couple different things because... Um, we want to. And so we're making a blueberry smoothie, and then we're doing smash mashed, mashed potatoes and a black bean burger that we're probably going to put blueberry ketchup on. Wow. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> yeah. well, I was trying so to think you're of, making the ketchup? Yeah, that sounds great. I think we might, yeah. It depends. I want to, but um, everyone in the group says that four recipes is too much. But. <laughs> we'll see how much time. We'll get an hour and four people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you'll need night prep, just like farmers. Yeah, right. <laughs> I tried to think of savory things that we do with blueberries, and it's all just sweet stuff. Yeah, yeah that was, well, um, I was the one who asked that question. We're yeah. making, um, like, a blueberry barbecue sauce. Okay. Yeah, I bet okay. that would be good. Yeah, yeah we haven't tried that. We eat wow. blueberries every single day. But we haven't we haven't branched off into savory. We should. No, it, it, it's it's just yeah. like a pie, yeah. scone, you know, sweet stuff. Yeah. Although they're not, you don't have to use a lot of sugar because they're already. Because so they are sweet. so sweet. Yeah. 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 We yeah. have them over for no reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Just yeah. by the handful. Yes. Yeah. On their that own. Too. Yeah. Frozen. It's just they're so good that way. Yeah. Oh. I thought we had more time than that. Um, hey, can we give a big round of applause and a big party? Thank you. Bye.